In this video, I'd like to talk about metric spaces. So, metric spaces. But first, I want you to think about a line. So, let's draw a line. And let's suppose we've got two points on this line. Say we've got a point X and a point Y. And let's say that this line just happens to be the real number line. Okay, so how do we find the distance between these two points, x and y? Well, we know that it's the absolute value of x minus y. It could just be y minus x, but we want the, def we want the uh, distance to always be positive, so that's why we need the absolute value signs. So that's how we might find the distance between two points on a line. Now let's try to extend this to two dimensions. So let's suppose we've got the xy plane and let's suppose you've got an, a point here and a point here and let's say that this point is equal to x1 uh, x2 and this point is equal to y1 y2 so how do we now find the distance between x and y in this case well as we know from Pythagoras' theorem that distance is just the square root of x1 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus y2 squared. So that's how we find the distance between x and y. And you notice that this is just really the same thing as the absolute value between x minus y. And uh, I'd like you to keep that in mind because we use this later. Now let's, ex let's imagine that we want to extend this notion of distance. Suppose instead that we're given some arbitrary set x. So now we've got some arbitrary set x. So this is the set x. And let's say we've got two points in this set. So we've got uh, x1 and x2. And let's say that the distance between these two points in this arbitrary set x, I'm going to write that as the distance between x1 and x2. Now we don't actually know what this distance function is yet, I, I sort of want to generalize what we've been talking about. Um, in our previous example our distance function was just the absolute value. So I didn't need to write d of x, y because I already knew what the function was. So here we're just trying to uh, generalize the notion of uh, a distance function. Now what kind of properties would it be useful for our distance function to satisfy? And this is where the notion of a metric space comes in. So, for instance, we might not want the distance between two points to be negative. That doesn't seem like a useful property to have. Likewise, we might want the distance from here to here, x1 to x2, to be the same thing as the distance from x2 to x1. Why should it be any different? So let's formally define this. Let's have a formal definition. So here's our definition. A metric space, a metric space, is a set X, or let's write XD. So that's a set X with the distance function D. Distance function D from x cross x to r satisfying. Now what does this mean? This means I take two points in x, that's what x cross x means, and it spits out a real number. That's sort of what we want distance to mean. Okay, so this is what our first property should be. And this is just a natural extension of distance. We want that the distance between x and y so let's say x and y align our set x. We want that distance to be greater than or equal to zero for each x, y, and x. And if you haven't seen this notation before, this upside down a just means for all. So for every value of x and y in our set x, we want this thing to be true. We also want one more condition, and I write it on the same line. We want the distance between x and y to be zero 
if and only if x equals y. And this makes sense. If x and y are the same point, i.e. they're on top of each other, then there's no distance between them. So that's what this statement means. This is saying that if the distance between x and y is zero, then x equals y. And if x equals y, then the distance between x and y is equal to zero. Okay, now let's have another property. We want the distance from x to y to be the same as the distance from y to x. And why should it be any different? I mean, you could probably think of some reasons why it might be, but in this case, I want the general definition of distance to satisfy this property. If you go from a point A to a point B, and if you go from a point B to a point A, the distance should be the same. So that's true for all x, y in x. There's one final property I'd like to talk about, and that's the triangle inequality. So this says that the distance from x to z, where z is another point in x, is less than or equal to the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z uh, for all x, y, and z in x. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, it's, it's, very actually, it's actually very easy to understand. Let's just draw a picture here. Let's say I've got my x, y plane. Let's say I've got a point x. Let's say I've got another point y and another point z. This axiom here, this number three, is saying that the distance from x to y, so, the, excuse me, the distance from x to z is always less than or equal to distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z which makes sense. Um, I mean, the, the shortest distance from x to z is always a straight line, and that's always going to be shorter than some other pattern that doesn't stick on a straight line. So that's the definition of a metric space. Looking back at our example in the beginning, uh, our metric space was actually uh, the real numbers equipped with the metric x minus y. So remember that our distance function up here was the absolute value of x minus y on the real number line. So that's why it's r, x minus y. Uh, for our two-dimensional example, we just replace this with a two, or in n dimensions, we sometimes write rn. And this thing is called the Euclidean space, because we've got rn equipped with the Euclidean metric. Okay, next time we'll talk at some more interesting and more exotic examples of metric spaces that fit our definition. See you then.